Hello and welcome to Living in Longview, a show about City of Longview government and services. Libraries have always been known for their great collection of books. But over the years, libraries have been transformed to be resources for much more than what can be found in turning the page. Today we'll be talking about how technology has changed how the Longview Public Library has accessed information for their customers. Hi, my name is Sean Hara, and today we're joined by some employees of our Longview Public Library, um, Kim Ball and David Hamblin, and also um, Clyde Club, who is with the Special Health Resources of East Texas. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, today we're going to be talking about really the role of the library and in this modern era um, as technology has changed. Kim, let's start there. You know, what is the role of the library and how has that changed maybe as uh, technology has advanced? Okay, I would say that the role of the library has been to provide access to information. So in, a, in essence, that role really hasn't changed, but the means has changed. So we're much more online, our presence is online. You can access our databases, our catalog, and a lot of our services online. So you don't actually have to go to the physical building. Right, now you still have books. Yes, we have 150,000 books. All right, so, so. There, there's still a lot of books there, <laughs> but now lot, there, so. there's a lot of other um, options for getting that information right. um, and, and helping people um, find the information that they, that they really need. Can you talk a little bit about um, some of those resources that you were just mentioning? Yeah, um, well, one of our latest ones that we have is OverDrive, and that's the one that's kind of been a buzz the last couple of weeks because we've had classes and teaching people how to use their devices and accessing eBooks online. And so OverDrive over is? OverDrive is the eBook service that we subscribe to. So that has a catalog of about 10,000 items that people can choose from. So using that service, um, somebody that is a customer of the Longview Public Library right. can actually download to their device um, exactly. an e-book mm -hmm. and how does it stay with them forever or no, is it just like checking out a it's regular just like book? checking out a book you have it for two weeks so and mm -hmm. then it checks itself back in there's never any overdues so wow that's, that's really neat that is really <laughs> neat um, you know a lot of people have been getting these devices you know for for Christmas yes. but they've been really popular really for the last several years mm -hmm. uh, and you've got the new service, how have you helped people actually understand how to use um, that thing that they got? Well, we've been offering classes. We've had three classes each of the last two weeks right after the holidays, try to get people uh, used to their device and get them set up for OverDrive, specifically use, using the library. Right. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of, you know, electronic media um, exactly. right there. And, and David, um, can you tell us a little bit about some of those other resources, maybe the uh, the computer labs that, that the library has uh, specifically? We have a large number of public access computers, both IBM and Macintosh. Uh, people use those all the time from anywhere from checking their email to applying for jobs online to getting tax forms. We have tax forms to looking at the Affordable Care Act and, and applying for that material. Uh, we offer training classes in computer use from beginning to advanced. We offer uh, job search classes, database classes uh, for to help the public increase their own skill levels. Uh, we're a government documents library. We have access to government printing office materials. We're a grants library where nonprofit organizations can look for grant material, both in print and online. But uh, our job is mostly to show people to these resources, to help them log on to the websites, to, to know what information they need to apply for a job or to look for government assistance. Right, and that's a, that's a great point because some people might think, okay, well, we've got the World Wide Web now. Anybody who has access, you know, they can, they, why do we need a library anymore? You know, what, but like what you were saying is people might not know where to look and, and that's something that, that you guys can do through um, your knowledge of, of what they might be looking for and how, how to gain that. Um, and also, and not everybody has access to, the, to those computer classes or, or computers or how to, to use them. So that's mm -hmm. where your computer classes are really yes. very important. Is that a really popular service there at the library? I mean, do those computers stay pretty full? It, it's very popular. We have um, classes all during the month, except holidays, and uh, we offer seminars occasionally on uh, computers, uh, genealogy, uh, public information seminars, 
Very good. And, and speaking of seminars, I think that's, that's a good time to actually segue to our, our next guest. Clyde, you guys uh, with the Special Health Resources for East Texas are actually going to be partnering with the Longview Public Library to provide a seminar providing information specifically about the Affordable Care Act. Um, can you give us a little bit of uh, background on, on um, what your role is there with Special Health Resources and how that fits in with um, the Longview Public Library? Sure. I'm a new employee with Special Health Resources, uh, specifically hired to implement this grant that was given from United Way, Tarrant County, which got their funding from Health and Human Services. And uh, so we're going to have, we will have four navigators to help people understand the Affordable Care Act and to help them enroll if they need assistance enrolling. And so I was charged that we have responsibility for the 14 counties of East Texas from about Canton all the way to the Louisiana line, about 900,000 people, and we're supposed to reach you know, all areas of that part of the state. So I was thinking, how am I going to connect with these communities, especially a lot of the rural communities, and uh, decided, well, most even small towns will have a library, and that's a point of uh, interaction for the people to go to. So. Uh, I got a list of the libraries and uh, we started with Longview Library and uh, we're going to partner with them and we have a seminar for about an hour, hour and a half to answer people's questions after a presentation on kind of what the Health Care Act is, who's impacted by it and what you need to do to enroll and whether you need to enroll or worry about getting an exemption so that you don't have to pay the penalty for not having insurance. Right, and you said you're a navigator and that sounds like a pretty apt title for, for what you guys will be doing. Yes. About half of our job is outreach to educate and let people know what's available, and then the other half of our job is to actually sit down and navigate the healthcare.gov website and help people enter their information and help them, you know, give, show them their choices so they can pick an appropriate health care plan for them. Well, let's talk about that for just a moment in terms of if someone is interested in signing up and, and, and learning more, what do they need to do in order to actually get signed up? If they were to come to the Longview Public Library and use the computers there, what, what information do they need? They need to have income information because you have to estimate what your income is going to be for 2014. So you can bring W-2s or pay stubs or if you know your income is going to be the same as it was in 2012, you can, the IRS can just automatically transfer that information. You just tell them, my income is going to be the same as 2012. Uh, you need to know your Social Security number for you and your dependents, anyone that you'll be enrolling. Uh, and uh, then you can type that into the, right. along with your personal information, your right. Social Security numbers. And how long does that process normally take if you're working alongside them? To, to start from start to finish and actually enroll in an insurance plan, it's maybe an hour, hour and a half. Uh, to determine if you're eligible for the insurance, it may only be like 30 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, can you tell us just once again, when is the seminar and, uh, and, and what time and those types of details? Okay, it's uh, February 6th at 6.30 p.m. in the evening, and we'll be discussing what the Affordable Care Act is, who needs to be concerned about it, who needs to enroll or check into enrolling. We'll talk about advanced premium tax credits, cost sharing. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, if you need exemptions because you can't find affordable health insurance but you don't want to pay the penalties when you pay your income tax. So we'll be discussing all those topics and then there'll be time for questions uh, for people that have individual situations and we can meet with them and share with them what we think their next step should be. All right, so it's really helping people understand what the new law means and, and what they need to do individually. Right, how it affects them individually. Right, very good. Well, Kim, you know, this, this type of program, it really um, makes sense from a standpoint of uh, sharing information, giving people mm -hmm. access to, to the information, and then um, also providing access to um, the computer Computers. system so they, mm -hmm. they can uh, gain that if maybe they don't have access anywhere else. Right. Um, you know, let's talk for a moment again about some of the, the various programs that are also offered at the library that maybe we haven't covered yet. What are some other things that, that the library offers? Oh, we offer a lot of different things. We have a uh, full extent, uh, full array of uh, children's programming we have for babies and toddlers and children. We have story times during the week. Uh, we also have people come in to do uh, entertainment type things for them. 
uh, for, let me see, oh, we have one of our latest things we're going to be restarting. We had a big program last summer of Minecraft, which is a mm -hmm. sandbox game on, that you can play online, but we have it on our Mac computer, so we're going to be starting that up next Saturday. Okay, so, so what when you say starting that up, as in, is it to um, learn how to play? Yeah, you, if you haven't played, if you haven't played before, you can come out and learn. And if you have played before, it's a good way to network with other players. So and you learn new skills and building things. So Very nice. That kind of thing, so. All right, that that does sound kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, it is kind of fun. So uh, we're also having a teen lock in uh, at the end of the month on the thirty first from seven to midnight. So we cater to them too. Uh, in March, we're having a big Friends of the Library book sale. So the very first weekend, the 6th through the 8th of very March. Nice. So. And, and David, there's also a pretty expansive genealogy program there at the library as yes, well. Is that we right? Yes, we have a very capable genealogist with access mm -hmm. to materials in our library and online. We have a genealogy, several genealogy databases, uh, Ancestry, Heritage Quests, and she's very good. And we have a lovely meeting room. The Genealogy Society meets there along with other civic organizations to conduct their business. Very good. Well, is there anything else that I've missed? Any other information? I'm sure there's probably a lot in those 150,000 <laughs> books that we haven't <laughs> talked about yet. But uh, any, any other things or things that you guys would like to, to make sure people know, uh, whether it's about the, uh, the special seminar that's coming up or any other resources that are at the library? I just think, uh, I hope that people would think of the library if they have information needs. So come on down, we're more than happy to help them. Basically, we're, we're there just to help them yeah. with whatever their information needs are, yeah. to interpret the best information for them, e even if it's just their favorite book or author. Very good. Clyde, anything else? I just think it's great that the library is letting us come in and be a resource to the community and you know, provide that information. Very good. One last thing. Where can people go? Where's the library located and, and what's your website? Okay, uh, we're located at 222 West Cotton Street, just on the edge of downtown. And our website is library.longviewtexas.gov. Very so. good. All right, so you encourage people to go get those free library free cards. Free library cards, yes. Very good, and, and come access some information and, yeah. and, and allow the staff, the resources that are there, um, to be able to help those, those folks that are looking for information. Very mm -hmm. good. Well, if you don't have your free library card yet, we encourage you to get one. It'll give you access to much more than just books. Those books are great, but there's a lot more information available as well at the Lawview Public Library. We encourage you to go out and learn more. You can see more information at library.lawviewtexas.gov. And thanks for joining us on this edition of Living in Longview.